I'm Andy Pilgrim with Automobile Magazine, and today at NCM Motorsports Park, I have a Porsche GT3 to take on track. It's gonna be a good one. The GT3 is the most well-known track day 911. So let's spend a little bit of time on the interior of the GT3. I like the steering wheel, um, it's so clean. There's no mess on that thing. There's, you don't see the cruise control or anything else. Also, you've got to see the 9,000 RPM red line, which is just something crazy. We don't see that on any other street car. This particular car did come with a PDK transmission, a brilliant gearbox. For 2018, you can get a GT3 Touring Edition, which only comes with a manual gearbox and no rear wing. This car also has the Sport Bucket Seat option. These seats are tremendous as far as I'm concerned. Very, very comfortable, hold you in brilliantly on the racetrack. The one thing about the seats that people don't like is because they are a one-piece seat, you can't recline the back of the seat. There's actually an electric motor and they go just up and down is the only adjustment for them. But for me, they're just a fantastic option, especially if you're gonna take your GT3 on track. I really like the look of the GT3. It's got a lot more aggressive lines than the regular 911, even something like the 911 GTS. It does have aerodynamics on it. The downforce is about 150 pounds of downforce at 124 miles an hour. It is very functional on track. This car has the huge optional carbon ceramic brakes. Massive 410 millimeter rotors up front with a six piston caliper and 390 millimeter rotor rear with the four piston caliper. Made in Flak, there's a reference to the Motorsport Center in Flak, Germany, kind of the birthplace of all the GTs, along with this four liter engine that comes in the car, 500 horsepower, 339 pounds feet of torque. It's a, just a screaming engine that was developed by the motorsports people. You can see the huge intakes there for this engine. It's no turbo on this car, it's normally aspirated, and I'll tell you what, it sounds brilliant. Before we show you what happened on the fast lap, I want to show you something that happened on the second fast lap on the exit of turn five at over 100 miles an hour. It really shows how well the GT3 communicates on track at the limit and how quickly it responds to input. Check out my hands in the picture in the bottom left and you'll see how quickly I was able to bring the GT3 back into shape. And lo and behold, I didn't even miss the apex at turn six. So that was a bit of what happened on the second hot lap at NCM Motorsports Park. Let's show you what happened on the first hot lap and that was actually the quickest lap I did in the GT3. GT3 screaming into turn one. Turn 1A, nice transition over the curb there, it doesn't really bother you. Left-hander, always very slippery here. You've got to watch, the, don't get the wrong side of that curbing right there. Flat out up to turn two. On the brakes, a lot of time can be lost here. Nice and tidy through the apex, use all the road on the exit. I didn't actually do that with the GT2 RS because it, was, it just surprised me how much stick the car had and I didn't have any practice. Late apex through four, late apex here to line you up for the quick break and into turn five. Very, very fast corner, over 100 miles an hour all the way through, very flat, car slides around a bit. Heavy brake into six, nice tidy apex. And again, a lot of mess on the left there where people go off. Downhill slide, a little bit of moisture there, didn't really bother me. And then tidy again here. Trail brake in, come on out of eight, slide up through nine, over the top of the hill and then monster trail braking, crazy ABS activity into here, and tidy, you've got to be tidy into this turn, you can lose a lot of time. Accelerate out up to deception, left-hander, you don't want to use too much of the curb through here because it's just a momentum corner, and then flat out over 13, and off we go up onto tabletop. Surprise, 500 horsepower car, over 140 miles an hour into turn 15, it's really flying, steady, through 16, drops away here, and the GT3 was very stable, surprisingly stable. The Michelin Cup 2 is doing a good job. They're not as grippy as the R's by any means, but they're still a very good tire. Dropping into 18, 18, a little bit of moisture, helped actually rotate the car a little bit into 19, down into the sinkhole, use the brake. Highest G-force on the track is usually about there, actually. 20, patience, 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 long corner. 
Late apex 21, late apex 22. And keep it tidy, got all the way over, nice. Hard on the gas out. And if you can see over 100 miles an hour right on the exit there, you're doing pretty well. The GT3 just screamed to a 211.14. That's a really good lap. I've had a heck of a time with the GT3 on track today at NCM Motorsports Park. It's been a blast. The weather's been perfect, and this car, it never disappoints. I first drove GT3s going back quite a number of years, race cars and street cars, and they just keep getting better. It takes everything you can throw at it. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it is. But if you've got 150 to 180 grand, throw it at this car. It's worth it. You got a house you want to sell? and you wanna live in a car, this is the car to live in. Go for it, guys, it's worth it.